Oh, my dear Fright Seekers, tonight's tale is about a man who thought he could outread fate itself, only to find some chapters of life are best left unturned. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell icon, or you might miss out on your own future tales. Now gather round as we delve into the collector's item. Elijah Matthews's home was an archive of the forgotten and the mystical, a repository where the whispers of history were preserved between leather-bound covers and fragile pages. Nestled in a secluded corner of town, his Victorian mansion was as much a character in his life as any human companion. The towering bookshelves, each a testament to his lifelong quest for knowledge, cast long shadows across the parquet floors, imbued with the scent of aged paper and the subtle hint of must. On a quiet evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of orange and purple, Elijah found himself ensconced in his favorite leather chair. The room was illuminated by a solitary lamp, its light a beacon amidst the encroaching dusk. Surrounding him were stacks of books, each awaiting its turn to divulge its secrets to its eager custodian. Elijah, with his hair more salt than pepper and glasses perched precariously at the tip of his nose, was the epitome of the scholarly recluse. His eyes, sharp and discerning, scanned the pages of an ancient manuscript, his mind adrift in the tales of alchemy and forgotten lore. The chime of his computer, an incongruous presence among the relics of the past, pulled him back to the present. With a reluctant sigh, he set aside the manuscript and turned to the screen, where an email notification blinked insistently. It was from Thomas, an old friend and fellow collector, whose enthusiasm for the digital age contrasted starkly with Elijah's traditionalism. Elijah, you've got to see this, the email read, a link nestled among the words like a challenge. With a click, Elijah was transported from his sanctuary to the chaotic marketplace of the internet. Craigslist, with its endless listings of the mundane and the bizarre, was not his usual haunt, but the link led him directly to an ad that caught his breath. For sale, a book of prophecies predicts the future with unnerving accuracy, not for the faint of heart. Elijah's first instinct was skepticism. His fingers danced across the keys, crafting a reply to Thomas. Surely you jest, a book that predicts the future sounds like the plot of a second-rate novel. Thomas's response was swift, a chuckle transmitted through the digital ether. And since when have you become so cynical, Elijah? Think of it as an adventure, or better yet, a mystery to solve. Elijah couldn't help but smile. Thomas knew him too well. The lure of the unknown, the possibility of uncovering a treasure amidst the detritus of the internet, was an itch Elijah couldn't ignore. He drafted a response to the seller. His curiosity peaked. I am interested in your book. Please provide details regarding its age, origin, and if possible, a sample of its contents. The seller's reply was prompt yet cryptic, offering no details but an address and a time for pickup. No price was mentioned, only a warning. Be sure you're prepared for what it reveals. Some truths cannot be unlearned. Elijah leaned back in his chair, the screen's glow casting shadows across his thoughtful face. Was he truly prepared for what lay ahead? His heart raced with anticipation and a hint of fear. This was no ordinary acquisition, but the beginning of a journey that promised to stretch the boundaries of his understanding. Curiosity, he whispered to the silent room, has always been my vice. With that, Elijah Matthews stepped out of his comfort zone, unaware that his life was about to intertwine with a destiny beyond his wildest imaginations. The night outside was calm, but within the walls of his home, a storm of curiosity and apprehension began to brew, marking the first steps of a journey that would redefine everything he thought he knew about fate, free will, and the nature of time itself. The book arrived on a day washed in the golden hues of an early autumn afternoon. 
Elijah's anticipation had built a nest in his chest, fluttering with every ring of the doorbell or knock that echoed through the halls of his home. When the parcel finally lay in his hands, unassuming and wrapped in plain brown papa, a shiver of excitement ran through him. It was heavier than he expected, its weight metaphorical as much as it was physical. In the solitude of his study, with the world outside reduced to a whisper, Elijah unwrapped the parcel. The book was nondescript, its cover a dull, faded brown, devoid of any title or author. It felt old, ancient even, its pages yellowed by time, but remarkably well-preserved. He opened it with reverence, a ritual he had performed countless times with countless books, yet this time it felt different. The first page contained nothing but dates and brief descriptions, a chronological list that seemed mundane at first glance. Elijah scoffed, a part of him disappointed by the anticlimax. Predictions, huh? He muttered to himself, let's see how accurate you really are. The first date was for the following day, predicting a sudden, unexpected rainstorm. Elijah, ever the skeptic, checked the weather forecast. Clear skies for the week. He went to bed that night with the book on his mind. Its challenge almost mocking in its simplicity. The next day, as the sun shone with unyielding brightness, Elijah couldn't help but glance at the sky, his thoughts returning to the book's prediction. It was late afternoon when the sky darkened abruptly, clouds gathering with a rapidity that seemed almost unnatural. Then the rain came, a torrential downpour that caught everyone by surprise. Elijah stood by his window, watching the rain lash against the glass, a sense of unease growing within him. Coincidence, he insisted, though the conviction in his voice was less than total. But as days passed, each prediction unfolded with alarming accuracy, a blackout that plunged his neighborhood into darkness, a surprise visit from an old friend he hadn't seen in years, each event documented in the book with eerie precision. It was the prediction of a small fire in the local library that finally drove Elijah to action. The fire occurred just as the book had foretold, a minor incident that nonetheless sent a chill down his spine. Armed with a determination to uncover the truth, Elijah picked up the phone and dialed the number of the cellar. The phone rang and a voice deep and smooth answered. I see you've begun to understand, the seller said, a hint of amusement in his tone. Understand? Understand what? Elijah's voice was a mix of frustration and curiosity. Who are you? How does the book work? All in good time, the seller replied cryptically. Just know, the book doesn't predict the future. It reveals it. Be careful with your curiosity, Mr. Matthews. Some doors, once opened, cannot be closed. The call ended abruptly, leaving Elijah with more questions than answers. He looked at the book, its pages now a source of fascination and fear. A decision lay before him to continue down this path, knowing it might lead to truths he was not prepared to face or to ignore the book's warnings and live in blissful ignorance. Elijah's choice was made in silence, a silent vow to uncover the mystery of the book, not knowing that this decision would lead him into darkness far deeper than he could imagine. The book was no longer just an object in his collection. It was a puzzle that consumed him, an enigma that whispered of things yet to come. Elijah's quest to unravel the mystery of the book propelled him into realms he had never before navigated. The more he delved into the enigmatic predictions, the more he realized that mere academic prowess would not suffice. He needed insights from those who tread the line between the known and the unknowable. Individuals whose lives were entwined with the arcane and the occult. His first encounter was with Professor Harold Jenkins, a historian specializing in esoteric beliefs and ancient prophecies. Elijah found him in a cluttered office, buried under piles of manuscripts and artifacts, the air thick with the smell of old paper and stronger, indefinable scents. 
Professor Jenkins, I've come about a book, Elijah began, laying the mysterious volume on the cluttered desk. It predicts the future, or so it seems. Jenkins peered over his glasses, his interest peaked as he turned the pages with a reverence reserved for the truly ancient. Fascinating, he murmured. I've seen many things in my time, Mr. Matthews, but this is unique. But how does it work? Can it truly predict the future? Elijah asked, watching the professor closely. The future, Mr. Matthews, is a river with many currents. If this book taps into those currents... Jenkins trailed off, lost in thought. I can't say for sure without more study, but be wary. Such knowledge often comes with a price. Elijah left Jenkins' office with more questions than answers, his concern deepening. His next visit was to an even more unconventional source, a psychic known as Madame Dorothea, who operated in the shadowy fringes of the city. Madame Dorothea's parlor was draped in velvet, lit by flickering candles that cast dancing shadows on the walls. The book you speak of, she said, her voice a soft whisper, is not just a receptacle of predictions, it is a catalyst. It feeds on the reader, intertwining their fate with its own. Elijah felt a chill despite the warmth of the room. How do I break its hold? he asked, desperation creeping into his voice. The book chose you, Mr. Matthews, or you chose it. The line between is blurred. To sever that connection, you must understand its origin, its purpose. Seek out the Creator or those who have been ensnared before you. Her words were a riddle wrapped in a mystery, yet they gave Elijah a new direction. His search led him to Leah, a journalist whose skepticism had once mirrored his own. They met in a cafe, the buzz of the city a stark contrast to the solitude of his recent days. You're chasing shadows, Matthews, Leah said after he shared his tale. But I'll admit, it's intriguing. A book that predicts, or creates, the future. That's a story. Help me then, Elijah implored. Not for the story, but to stop it. People could get hurt. Leah regarded him, her eyes reflecting the weight of his words. All right, Matthews, I'm in. But if we're doing this, we're doing it my way. Thorough research, no stone unturned. Together, they dove into the heart of the mystery, tracing the book's origins through a tangled web of history and myth. Their journey led them to an obscure reference in an ancient diary, buried in the archives of a forgotten library. The diary spoke of a tome crafted not to foresee the future, but to shape it, a creation of a mad scholar whose thirst for knowledge had crossed into the realm of the divine. This is it, Leah said, excitement lacing her voice as they poured over the diary. It's not just predicting events, it's influencing them. We need to find out how to stop it. Elijah felt the weight of their discovery, a heavy burden that bore down on him with the gravity of their task. The book was more dangerous than he had imagined, not a guide to the future, but a force that molded it to its will. Their search had led them to the threshold of understanding, but crossing that threshold would require confronting the book's power head-on. Elijah knew then that the path ahead was fraught with peril, but turning back was no longer an option. The book had drawn him into its web, and he would either unravel its mysteries or be consumed by them. As the pieces of the puzzle began to align, revealing the ominous nature of the book, Elijah and Leah found themselves facing a daunting challenge. The diary's revelations had cast a new light on their quest, transforming it from a search for knowledge to a desperate race against time. The realization that the book was not merely a passive predictor, but an active creator of the future, sent a chill through Elijah. It's like we're not just fighting a book, he said one evening, as they sat amidst the clutter of notes and open volumes that had taken over his study. We're fighting destiny itself. Leah, ever the pragmatist, shook her head. Destiny, fate, 
whatever you want to call it, it's not set in stone. This book, whatever its origins, it's a tool. And like any tool, it can be countered, maybe even destroyed. Determined to find a way to break the book's hold, they delved deeper into arcane and forgotten lore, seeking out a method to undo what had been set in motion. Their search led them to an ancient ritual, one that promised to sever the ties that bound the book to its reader. Under the light of a waning moon, they prepared the ritual in a secluded grove, far from prying eyes. The book lay at the center of a circle of candles, its pages fluttering in the night breeze as if in anticipation. Are we sure about this? Elijah asked, doubt creeping into his voice as he looked down at the tome that had become his tormentor. Leah met his gaze, her expression resolute. No, we're not, but doing nothing is a sure way to let it win. It's time to take control of our fate. With each word of the incantation, the air around them grew heavier, the candles flickering wildly as if protesting the disturbance. But when the final word was spoken, there was a moment of absolute silence, a breath of the world held in suspension, then chaos. The book burst open, its pages tearing free in a whirlwind that defied the natural order. Elijah and Leah shielded their faces, but when they dared to look again, the book remained unharmed and serene amid the tumult it had caused. It didn't work, Elijah said, despair tainting his voice as he stared at the book, its presence a mocking reminder of their failure. Leah picked up the book, her hands trembling. Then we find another way. This isn't over, Elijah. We can't let it be over. Their failure to destroy the book was a bitter pill, but it was also a catalyst, solidifying their resolve. The book's predictions had become more dire, hinting at calamities not just personal to Elijah, but threatening to ripple outwards, touching the lives of innocents. Elijah realized then the true cost of his quest for knowledge. It wasn't just his own fate that hung in the balance, but those around him, ensnared by his actions and the book's insidious influence. I should have left it alone, he whispered one night, the weight of his guilt, a tangible presence in the room. Leah placed a hand on his shoulder, her touch a small comfort in the darkness. You didn't know, and now we fight it together. We'll find a way to end this, to protect others from its curse. But as events began to unfold, mirroring the book's predictions with terrifying accuracy, Elijah understood the grim truth. The cost of delving into the unknown was not just the danger it posed to him, but the shadows it cast on those he sought to protect. In a final desperate act, Elijah chose isolation, distancing himself from the world he had sought to save. He hid the book away, burying it where he hoped it would never be found, its dark legacy sealed by his own hands. Yet even as he retreated from the world, Elijah knew the battle was not his alone to fight. The book's existence was a challenge to those who would come after, a siren call to the curious and the brave. And as he faded into obscurity, a legend in his own right, the book waited, its pages silent for now, but always ready to turn once more. As the final page turns, our collector learns that some items are beyond appraisal, especially when the cost is one's own destiny. If you've ever found yourself ensnared by a curiosity that chills to the bone, leave us a comment below. Perhaps, like Elijah, you'll find there's no closing the book on certain mysteries. Fright fans, click next for more chills and hit subscribe to join our ghastly gang. You see, who dares to miss out, so watch our next video.